Thomas Ricker with Engadget. Uh, nobody's mentioned home automation here, and uh, I know Google made a made an announcement earlier earlier this year, a very vague announcement about software that'll be coming later this year. Uh, Nokia has announced its uh, Home Connect service, which is uh, supposed to be coming later this year as well. Now that we have a major consumer brand behind home automation, we don't have all this fragmentation that exists in the market now. And we get behind some of these, 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 these uh, fragmented protocols as well, because we have Zigbee and uh, Z-Wave and, and the X10 legacy protocols and so on. Is this market going to blow open? Because I just bought a house, and I'm trying to automate it, and I can't do it. It's it's it, it's, yeah. it's a problem. Yeah, they, don't forget we we actually behind X10 originally. RCA was behind X10 originally. So the, so we have a major brand one time. The di the difficulty with home automation, you pointed it out exactly, is there have been a lot of conflicting standards. It's and the consumer has been. I mean, folks like us, because I'm I'm uh, my home is fully automated, as my wife likes to remind me on a regular basis. Now, the only home that's fully automated and it takes a, a manual to actually operate the lights. Um, the, the reality is what seems to be driving it now, though, is the idea of trying to conserve energy, this idea that, that perhaps uh, a utility could go out and, and actively back down the, the washing machines, the dryers, turn off the lights in homes that are not being occupied, and therefore not have to build more nuclear power plants or, uh, or uh, especially coal-fueled power plants, which are causing a tremendous amount of uh, environmental impact. So the hope is is because right now we've got an industry behind it, the utility industry is behind it and driving it, we'll make some progress. But the exact problem you, you mentioned still exists, is we, we still have way too many standards. If we want to start truly automating homes, we really need one. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, we're back to the old PC industry model. We wouldn't have PCs today if we didn't come up with it. If IBM hadn't opened up all the, uh, all the interfaces and said, okay, everybody here can play, and we had, uh, had common standards. If you even look at the cell phone market, What's really keeping smartphones from, from proliferating right now is the fact that we've got these, you know, multiple platforms. Uh, people struggle with which one to go on. And I mentioned before, one of the things that may, may change that is the fact that we move to the cloud and we get one platform to operate on. One nice thing with regard to home automation is increasingly these firms are looking at the cloud as a place to provide that stand, standard control mechanism to control all the devices. So you could diversify, but the utility could use then a standard set of interfaces to act, act on a series of different technology devices and so it's concealed from the user. I think we're closer, we're not there yet. I think a lot of people consider home automation having lots of kids and assigning them tasks. Uh, <laughs> well, also, in, in, in terms of home automation, you have very successful companies like Crestron and Extron which are running proprietary systems. They're doing a lot of business in Europe and they're very tied down on this high-end, high-margin business. But all it's going to take is a Cisco to come in and to buy one of these companies as part of that portfolio. And I think that's what's going to crack open the home automation market. Okay, Harry and then Tim, you, you have a, a comment? Um, you know, I think speaking of phones, I think you're going to see phones become remote controls for almost everything in our lives, including home automation. That's kind of been another missing piece of the puzzle. And you're already seeing on the iPhone applications for controlling various devices around your house. And um, it's kind of for the first time you have something you can take anywhere that has wireless capability for communicating with every other device and which has a completely programmable screen. I'm still trying to figure out how the phone's going to replace the car, as you said, because where do you put the tires? I'm just, I'm, it's a picture thing. Yes, Tim. Yeah, the only thing I would, I would say is we have been saying home auto, next year's home automation for I don't know how long. As we get closer to perhaps it looking like there is maybe a solution, I'm still thinking we're at least five to seven years out before this thing gets solved. Now, my name is Richard Barnes. I'm editor-in-chief for Ecro International. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Docomo Intertouch are actually uh, uh, working very much on this. Um, and, and if they get behind it in a big way, this is actually going to uh, really drive the market as well. Of course, Docomo are huge, as we all know. And, um, and they've developed a system already which works with an iPhone, by the way. Um, and, it, and it does work quite well. Um, so. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, there, there are some uh, it, there are quite some quite good systems working with iPhones, um, and, and so I think this uh, everything connected will, will actually take off as well. And, and relate to it, uh, I had an experience a couple of days ago uh, with the um, the publication we're doing for the hotel industry. I had the pleasure of visiting the um, uh, the Accor Group in Paris, and they've got what they call concept rooms. And I, I don't know if any of you have had the chance to visit a, an Accor Group concept room, but it's like a, a concept car. Uh, and it's done in the same spirit, so they're putting these rooms together, not with the idea of eventually using the stuff in them 
for, for, for the next generation rooms, but to test um, the way people react in different situations in a room. And, uh, and so I met the, the guy who, who's putting these rooms together, his name is Michel uh, Giquel, uh, an extraordinarily interesting guy, and, and, I, and I wanted to just relate that, because what he was saying is that um, there's, a, there's a fundamental evolution happening at the moment in the way that we live and use space. And I think this relates directly to what we're doing at EFA, because of course, with the, with the addition of home appliances, uh, it makes sense. What he was saying is that, of course, back in the past you had the Houseman era, the Victorian era, when all the houses had individual rooms, the kitchen was for cooking, the living room was for living in, the dining room was for eating in. Uh, and now the, the spaces are becoming intermingled in, in, in some way. And what was interesting was he said, well, without the, tech, without the technologies we've got now, we'd never be able to do that. Um, and what he did say is that, that the way they see it, uh, this, this um, movement is going to be accentuated over the next 20 or 30 years. Uh, what is interesting also, because I said to him, well, does this mean there's going to be no walls between the rooms anymore? And he said, yes, it doesn't mean that. Um, it means that people, because the, the other thing coming into this is they've discovered that people's biorhythms have a lot also to do with the way they react in the, within the house. So at some times they'll want to be sort of cocooning, at other times they're going to want to be open. And I think all this kind of information and stuff that we should be taking into account in planning uh, products, and, and particularly as we see with, with Philips, uh, the consumer lifestyle um, uh, spirit that, that, that they've developed, I think is very much in, in fitting with this, as is uh, Eva. And, and so I think what, what we can say is that technology is enabling uh, this change in the way that people are living. Uh, it's enabling the, the multi-purpose uh, purposing of, of a house or, or a hotel room, um, and, and it's becoming adaptable then in that sense. Uh, for example, we can put an LCD in every room, so if you feel like watching a TV, or now it might be OLED. Um, uh, and, and so I, I think that's, that's something that's very important that we should be taking into account. Uh, when we're talking about all of this stuff. And, and, um, and again, if anybody's interested in that, that interview with this guy, I'm going to be producing that pretty shortly. But it, I, I think that's a very profound um, uh, and fundamental evolution that we should be taking into account. Good point. 